So what happens when AC electricity and water mix together? Well, we're about to find out today when we demonstrate the concept of the electrode boiler. Now what I've got here is a little bucket. It's filled up with hot water. It's got some crud in there already. And we've got two metal electrodes on there hooked to alligator clips. To our typical little two-prong plug. And over here we have a kilowatt meter set to watts right now so we can measure the amount of wattage that's going into the water. Now, water by itself is not a good conductor. It needs some kind of salt in there. So a little bit of junk in there will carry some current, but we have some sodium chloride, also known as table salt, nearby, which we will put in there to control the amount of current. So, let me plug this in to our kilowatt meter. And you can immediately see that we've got about 27 to 28 watts of power going in there. That's not very much. It's only about 220 milliamps, but the current is live in there. So what do you think is happening to the water right now with the, current, the uh, power going into it? Well, as we know, DC is used for electrolysis. So what do you suppose AC does when it's in the water? Well, in this case, the only thing AC is really doing to the water is heating it up. That's why this is the concept of an electrode boiler. We're boiling the water electrically by feeding AC into it, but we need something to carry the current to heat up the water. That's why we need salt to make an electrolyte solution. And since we're adding sodium chloride, we're essentially making brine, as it's called. Still 27.5. Put the camera right here, looking at the kilowatt meter. Here's our sodium chloride, also known as table salt. Now watch the meter as I start adding table salt into the solution. See, now I've added a generous portion of salt in there, and you can see that our wattage is going up to about 1,100 watts now, or 1.1 kilowatts. And when you can see, you can see the bubbling around the electrodes. Again, the water is continuing to heat up, but with the salt in there now, it's got an electrolyte solution that allows current to pass through it a lot more easily. We've reduced the resistance of the water. And as the current continues to pass in there, it's going to heat up the water more and more until the water reaches boiling point where it can't heat up anymore. And again, as the water continues to heat up, our current is actually going to continue to climb as more and more of the salt starts dissolving in that solution. Letting this heat up some more, and I can assure you the water is definitely getting hot. Still not quite at boiling yet. I put a little more salt in there to raise the current, but you see we're getting a warning on our kilowatt here because we're now going past 1700 watts, which is now 16. Point, almost 16.2, yeah, 16.2 amps. And I'm powering this thing off of a 20 amp circuit, so I am 
pushing up near the limits the power of the uh, circuit can deliver. And again, we're also pushing the limits of a kilowatt here because technically that can't handle more than 15 amps. That's why it's flashing. Our cord is definitely warm now. Sixteen point five amps. One thousand seven hundred sixty five watts. It's going into that bucket. <laughs> amps. If this thing continues to rise, we're going to actually end up exceeding the power output of the circuit. Oh, kilowatt just turned off. Now you can see we're at the boiling temperature of the water. As you can see, the electrodes are really going now. Now we have reached the boiling temperature of the water. And again, we're feeding 20 amps of power in there, over 2,000 watts. And again, the boiling temperature of water is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what that water is at right now. That is how the electrode boiler works. Simply just putting electricity into an electrolyte solution, in this case brine, that's how you boil water straight with electricity.